Introduction The timeline of Naruto can be reasonably considered a hot mess. There's no official timeline, or at least not for the whole series. Partial timelines have been given. Fan attempts to make a complete timeline are fraught with headaches. The reasons for the difficulty are multiple. Some cite Kishimoto as not being good at details, or the fast pace at which Naruto was produced, which is in no way conducive to careful detail work, or that plot elements and characters were introduced without any lead-up. One or all of these could have factored in. Add on to this the large amount of data to sort through from the anime, manga, books, movies, supplementary material, and translation errors, and you have a situation rife with confusion and misinformation. One of the best fan-made timelines I've found, and which may or may not be considered the best by the fandom at large, I have not confirmed this, is this one made by a user Sealantau on Naruto-pedia. I know you don't have access to the link right there in the video. It's in the summary. <laughs> anyway, it does an excellent job at getting all the relevant facts down and citing sources, barring a few small things like accidentally putting down the wrong month for Yamato's birthday. However, even though the calculations are likely as good as they're ever going to get, the results are still... weird in places. I don't just mean continuity errors. There are points where, speaking from a narrative perspective, the placement of events is very strange. To that end, I decided to take Sealantau's timeline, the final version updated on 11-12-2021, as a base and tweak it in the hopes of ironing out the issues that I saw. It may seem excessive, but I am by my nature a detail-oriented person with an interest in history, culture, and world building. How could I not make an attempt or not try to have a firmer idea of what happened? The answer is that I could not. This, unfortunately, required striking out certain canon details. As such, this is not to be considered the canon or real timeline. Not in the least. This is a fanon timeline. You can think of it like one of those what if I rewrote Naruto or how would I fix Naruto discussion videos. Oh wait, this is in video form now. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, there will be events added into this timeline that I made up myself. Changes based on my own personal tastes. I would not consider this a full-on alternate universe timeline per se, more like my own take on the standard Naruto timeline, if that makes sense. My focus will be on the narrative of the Naruto series, not just getting logical events to fit together, but also working towards an interesting and perhaps stronger story. This is why some of the changes I will make will be completely made up and others will be created based on logical deductions. I also tried to follow in the spirit of what the story was trying to do. As for what I mean by that, you'll see in the timeline itself, and I'll do my best to explain why I crossed things out, why I added things, and my thought process behind it. I also tried to keep the amount of canon data that I completely struck out to a bare minimum, focusing in on particularly difficult elements. For example, instead of rewriting a character's entire backstory in the wake of a continuity error, see Zabuza, I would instead choose to strike out the one detail that caused the issue. So, again, you can think of this like one of those rewrite projects, but a bit more precise. Obviously, Naruto has plenty of plot and story elements that could, and should, be rewritten anyway, like its terrible treatment of 99% of its female characters, but that's not what I'm going for here. I'm focusing on history and backstory, and helping build up the stage upon which the story is performed. Because the timeline itself is so very long, I will be placing it in the next chapter, or rather, uh, since this is the video version of the analysis, um, the timeline will be broken into multiple videos. Um, it's going to contain, uh, basically in the text version, if you see it, I put the timeline in the second chapter, and the third chapter was a list of all my comments and corrections and discussions on the various changes. And in order to do this in a video version, I'm going to have to read over the third chapter, you know, the comments and discussions, and I'm going to have to cover each one of those discussions in the order I put them down, which means that as I look at the timeline, I'll be adding in visuals and trying to keep that in sync. 
you know, I want to read from the discussions themselves, which means I have to be looking at that and, you know, I can't do that and have the uh, timeline itself on screen at the same time when I'm recording. So I'm going to have to bounce around a lot in the timeline. You'll see a lot of changes that are much further down in the discussion section, you know, uh, like uh, comment number one or something. And there's something like way further down that you can also see on screen. And I could get that in the moment, but it's a lot more organized if I just go in the order that I made the comments and discussions and the changes. It's going to be roughly in order, mostly, but not entirely. I know it's going to be a bit confusing, but if I'm going to do a video version of this, it's the neatest way to do uh, something like this with the timeline. Um, I also can't put the text for Sealant House original references or explanations in this. That you're going to have to look up for yourself. However, I will keep the placement of the original citations. So if you want to compare the two, you can. Legend. Here is the legend that I used for modifying the timeline. I guess it, well, it will matter when you're looking at the timeline when I add those visuals in in post, because I'm just recording the audio here. Or if you just want to look at the text version, there's that too. But uh, basically, here is the legend. Information that is in italics are items that in Sealant House original timeline that needed to be reconfirmed. Information that is struck out are things in Sealant House timeline that I altered. They will also be accompanied by a citation, uh, which are discussions that I'll basically be reading from. Information that is written in bold on the timeline are things that I've added in. They'll also have a citation. Sealant House references I formatted as OR number for original reference. My changes will be listed as C number for corrections or comments. Some of them are just going to be pretty much comments. Uh, years will be marked with leap or omitted leap in parentheses. Well, some of the years. Uh, ones marked with leap are years that are, of course, leap years. And I'll be getting to that in just a minute. And omitted leap years are, well, it hasn't really come up on the timeline so far, but these would be years that would normally be considered uh, leap years, but which are skipped which I'll get to a little bit further down the line. But for now, the next subject, the year system. Before Kage year, BKY, and Kage year, KY, and the importance of zero in world building. To start off, let me discuss the year system I'll be using while offering some general advice on world building. In Sealantau's timeline, they use the system of B and B and A and B, now, that's before Naruto's birth and after Naruto's birth, much like how the real world uses BC AD. This is not the best system to, in the world to use, objectively speaking, since most of the series events happened before he was born, creating a timeline that mostly uses negative numbers, which can be a bit trickier to work with and calculations less intuitive and harder to do in your head. In point of fact, on Santao's timeline, there are 64 years of note before Naruto is born. That works out to a lot of negative calculations. But this system is also the only real metric available to us in canon for measuring time in the series, other than the start of Part 1, uh, the Naruto series, and Part 2, Shippuden, which is what all the ages and dates given to us in canon are relative to. It's also not a system that can be used in-universe. That is to say, a system of measuring time used by the characters of Naruto. What would be better is if there was a system in canon for measuring years, as opposed to just the 12 months of the Gregorian calendar. An in-universe calendar system is pretty much a requirement if you're going for the level of complex, detailed world-building attempted in Naruto, and the lack of one hurts the work just as much as any of the other writing flaws. But many fans have hit upon a solution, including myself. In fact, we've hit upon the same idea. Fans have called it by different names, but in my case, I call it the BKYKY system, before Kage year and Kage year. 
In this system, our metric for measuring years is centered around the formation of the hidden villages, or at the very least, the formation of the first, Konoha. Using the formation of Konoha as the measuring point has the benefit of turning most of those negative numbers into positive ones, making calculations easier to do. Plus, it's a natural fit for the world of Naruto. The formation of the Hidden Village system was a huge historical event in their world, so it only seems logical that they'd choose to measure time around it. If you choose to use the same sort of system for your own fan writing, or if you are creating your own original world with its own original timekeeping system, there is one other very important thing that, while well, you don't have to do, is highly recommended. Make your measuring point a zero year. The idea of a zero year may sound odd to you, and some reading this, or listening in this case, may question why. For those that do, I have a simple problem for you. Let's create a hypothetical character. His name is Bob. Bob here was born on January 1st, 5 BC. How old would Bob be on January 1st, 5 AD? Think about it for a minute or two. Also insert the Jeopardy music right here. If any of you got the answer of 10, you are wrong. But why are you wrong? It's five years in BC and five years in AD, right? No, it's not. Count it out from January 1st to January 1st, and you get nine. If you translate the BC 80 system to a number line, the BC end becomes the negative side, where the further back you go, the larger the numbers get, while AD is the positive end of the number line. But unlike a number line, there is no zero. It goes from one BC, negative one, to one AD, positive one. Because there is no zero, a step is skipped, so any calculations like this between the negative end of your timeline and the positive end will always be thrown off by one, which is very annoying and can make the difference between a perfect timeline and a continuity error. This is why you should really make a zero year. Sealantau did just that with their Naruto timeline, and so did I. You'll be able to see it on the timeline in the next chapter, or rather in the visuals of the videos that will follow this. So all I'll say for now is that when doing my calculations, part one of the series was set to 63 KY and part two was 66 KY. Boruto's era was set to 82 KY for what little it will matter. The Boruto end of Sealantau's timeline was already very sparse and so far it hasn't factored very much into this project. Leap years and omitted leap years. Yes, I managed to account for leap years here. It was a surprise to me, too. But while I was pursuing various pieces of data for the timeline, I came across the fact that Kabuto's birthday is February 29th. His birth year is a leap year. From there, I was able to work out what years were leap years, both backwards and forwards. Normally, this sort of thing would be a correction slash comment section in Chapter 3, or rather something I would be reading from eventually, in this case but I didn't feel like adding the many, many citations for it. Instead, I decided to discuss it here. Leap years, as you know, occur every four years and in the Gregorian calendar, resulting in February having an extra day. This is because each year is 365.25 days long. What you may not know, however, are that there are actually three rules for determining leap years two inclusion rules, and one exclusion rule. Rule number one states that any year that is an integer multiple of four is a leap year. That's the one everyone knows. Rule number two states, however, that any year that is evenly divisible by 100 is not a leap year. And rule number three says that any year that is evenly divisible by 400 is still a leap year. So yes, there are years that, by the first rule, would normally be considered leap years, but are skipped. In summary, 1996 AD, leap year. 1596 AD, leap year. 1500, 1700, 1800, and 1900 AD, not leap years. 1600 and 2000 AD, still leap years. Since the exception is part of the definition, I suppose it's something of a misnomer to say they're omitted, 
but I would still use the term to make things clear to everybody. This is why some years will be labeled with leap and others omitted leap. Although, um, and this is a note I left at the end in the original chapter, um, I would take any years on the negative end of the timeline that are labeled with leap with a grain of salt. I'm not entirely sure if they're accurate. There was a little bit of a issue with the math doing the calculations because I actually made a quick calculator to try and you know work out all the leap years so I wouldn't have to keep doing it manually and I think maybe something went wrong there so I'm not entirely sure if those are correct. Anyway, in the case of the Naruto world, Kabuto's birth year is what I call 43KY, so every leap year is also an integer multiple of 4 plus 3. And with all of that out of the way, I will now move on to the timeline proper, which, as I mentioned earlier, will be done in a series of videos as I go through the various discussions. Um, I don't actually delete any of the discussions or comments that I make in this timeline, any of the discussion sections, any of the numbers, I don't delete them and I don't renumber them because I would have to renumber all the ones that come after it. And that is just annoying and potentially confusing. And, you know, I, I could easily get mixed up or just mix up which ones are labeled with what and that could be a problem. So that's at least good for doing these videos. So it's not like, you know, I have to delete something, I have to restructure it. Ugh. Ugh. But yeah. Next video in this series, well, for part one of this series, it's part of a larger Naruto world building series, and those videos may come out out of order. They will be in order in a playlist, but next video for the timeline, I'll, well, I'll be getting into the timeline, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!